This video will show you how to solve uh, combustion analysis type questions like example eight that you can see in the slides for the first unit. Uh, the question reads, when 0.6943 grams of terephthalic acid with a ma molar mass of 166.13 grams per mole, um, which only contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, was submitted to combustion analysis, it produced 1.471 grams of CO2 and 0 0.226 grams of, of water. Calculate, first of all, the empirical formula of terephthalic acid, and second of all, the molecular formula. So we're told right in the question that this compound only contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That means its empirical formula is going to take the form of C to the CX, H, Y, O, Z. And what's going to happen is this is going to be burned in the presence of oxygen, and this will produce carbon dioxide as well as water. So all of the carbon that's present in the original compound will become CO2, all of the hydrogen will become water, and the oxygen present both in the compound and in the oxygen we're burning it in uh, becomes part of both of the products. So we're also told that the total mass of the compound that we're submitting for a combustion analysis is equal to 0 0.6943 grams. I'm going to call that mt, which is mass total. And that is going to be burned to create a mass of carbon dioxide equal to 1.471 grams as well as, um, let me just get rid of that, a mass of water equal to 0 0.226 grams. So the idea here is that the mass of the carbon in the CO2 is equal to the mass of the carbon that's in the original compound. So this is kind of what we're going with. We have the mass total that we see above is equal to the mass of the carbon in that compound. What we're going to do is take this compound here, kind of divide it up into the three elements, and the mass of the carbon plus the mass of the hydrogen plus the mass of the oxygen. Okay, so the idea here is what we want to do is solve for the mass of the carbon, mass of the hydrogen, mass of the oxygen. What that will allow us to calculate is the moles of the carbon, the moles of the hydrogen, and the moles of the oxygen. Because really, if you look at this structure up here, the x to y to z ratio is what we're trying to solve for. That is equal to the ratio of the moles of carbon to the moles of hydrogen to the moles of oxygen. So we're going to try to get the mass of these three elements, and then from that, we're going to get the moles. So the first thing we are going to do is find the mass of carbon that is in the CO2. That is equal to our mass of carbon in our original compound. Then we're going to find the mass of hydrogen in water that's equal to our mass of hydrogen in our original compound. Then we already know what the total mass is. So if we know the total mass, the mass of carbon and the mass of hydrogen, we can calculate the mass of the oxygen. So that's gonna be our third step is getting the mass of the oxygen, okay? Step four will be to take all three of these masses that we calculated in steps one, two, and three, and get moles of carbon, moles of hydrogen, moles of oxygen. And once we have those three numbers, we can make a ratio which can get us x, y, and z, which gives us our empirical formula. So let's start with step one, which is finding the mass of carbon, okay, that's present in the CO2 that we're making. The mass of carbon is going to be equal to the moles of carbon multiplied by the molar mass of carbon. And the moles of carbon that we're going to have in our original compound is equal to the moles of carbon dioxide that we produce. 
So we can write moles of carbon dioxide times mass of carbon, and that is equal to the mass of CO2 over the molar mass of CO2 multiplied by the mass of carbon, by the molar mass of carbon, and that equals 1.471 grams, which is the mass of CO2 given in the problem, divided by 44.01 grams per mole, which is the molar mass of CO2, multiplied by 12.011 grams per mole, which is the molar mass of carbon from the periodic table, and that gives us 0 0.40146 grams. Notice here I'm keeping five significant figures, even though we should only be having four significant figures uh, because of what we have here, but it's best practice to keep one extra significant digit throughout your calculations and do your final rounding in the very last step. All right, we've finished step one. We have the mass of carbon. Next, we want to do the same thing and find the mass of hydrogen. That's moles of hydrogen multiplied by molar mass of hydrogen. Now, notice that for each mole of water that we have up here, we're going to have two moles of hydrogen because there's two moles of hydrogen in the formula unit uh, for water. So what that means is when we do this step, what we want is two, sorry, that equals two times the moles of water multiplied by, again, the molar mass of, of hydrogen. We can convert that further to, to be two times the mass of water, which is given in the problem, divided by the molar mass of water, multiplied by the molar mass of hydrogen. All right, that equals two times 0 0.2 to six grams divided by the molar mass of water, which is 18.02 grams per mole, multiplied by 1.008 grams per mole equals 0 0.02530 grams. And yet again, we are holding one extra uh, significant figure here. So that is our mass of hydrogen. Up here is our mass of carbon. Step three is to figure out our mass of oxygen. Okay, so we know that our mass total is equal to our mass of carbon plus mass of oxygen plus mass of hydrogen. We know that our mass of oxygen, therefore, is our mass total minus our mass of carbon minus our mass of hydrogen, which is equal to 0 0.6943 grams minus 0 0.40146 grams, which we got from up here minus 0 0.02530 grams, which we got from up here. So our mass of oxygen that we have here in the end is 0 0.26754 grams. This last digit here is not a significant figure, but again, we carry one extra typically when we do these sorts of problems. Um, step four, if you remember from above, was then converting these masses into moles. So we can get moles of carbon is equal to mass of carbon over molar mass of carbon. Our mass of carbon was 0 0.40146 grams over 12.011 grams per mole. And that will give us 0 0.033424 moles. Again, we should have four sig figs, but we're carrying one extra. Um, do the same thing for hydrogen. Moles of hydrogen is mass of hydrogen over molar mass of hydrogen. 
which is 0 0.02530 grams divided by 1.008 grams per mole. And that gives 0 0.02510 moles. Next, we do the same for oxygen. So the moles of oxygen is the mass of oxygen over the molar mass of oxygen, which is equal to 0 0.26754 grams, which we got from up above here, divided by, for oxygen, is 15.999 grams per mole. That's straight off the periodic table. And that gives us 0 0.016722 moles. So that gives us our three moles of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We now have the ratio of those three, which allows us to get the ratio of x to y to z, and thus the empirical formula of our compound. However, what we normally see in compounds is x, y, and z being whole numbers. So what we would like to do is convert these three moles we just calculated into whole numbers which we can do by dividing each one of them by whichever one is the smallest. So the smallest number of moles of these three is oxygen, which is 0 0.016722. So we're gonna take each one of these and divide by 0 0.016722 moles, which is equal to one, 0 0.016722 moles, which is equal to 1.5 divided by 0 0.016722 moles, which is equal to two. So we're almost there. Uh, we still don't have quite whole numbers because we have this 1.5. The way to get it around that is to multiply all three of these by two, which gives us four, three, and two. Now we have whole numbers and we can say that our empirical formula will be equal to carbon 4, hydrogen 3, oxygen 2. Empirical formula means that's the lowest whole number ratio of elements in this structure. Great, that's where we wanted to be at the end of part 1. For part 2 or part B, we are asked to find the molecular formula. The molecular formula is just the empirical formula, empirical formula multiplied, each of the, um, the subscripts multiplied by some factor n, right? Because the empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio, molecular formula is the actual ratio, which is some product, okay? Some multiple of the empirical formula. So to find n, n will be equal to the molar mass of the molecular formula divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula. Well, that's easy enough. We have the molecular formula molar mass given in the question as 166.13 grams per mole. For the empirical formula, we need to figure that out. That's going to be equal to the molar mass of that substance right there, that empirical formula. So that molar mass is going to be equal to 4 times the molar mass of carbon plus 3 times the molar mass of hydrogen plus 2 times the molar mass of oxygen which is equal to 83.065. So then our N becomes 166.13 grams per mole. This is also in grams per mole, divided by 83.065 grams per mole, which is equal to two. So N should always be a whole number. And we do have a whole number in this case, so our molecular formula is the same as our empirical formula with all of the subscripts multiplied by two, which is equal to C8H6O4. And now we're done. We have our molecular formula 
and we have our empirical formula. And that's it.